Well, good morning, church. We are indeed thankful to be able to meet in the house of the Lord again this morning, to be able to praise Him and to give Him thanks for yet another beautiful day. And what a beautiful Lord's Day morning it is. We are happy that you're here with us this morning. Beautiful audience. Sunday morning audience has been really, attendance has been really good. We thank you for that. Thank you for being here. And I'm sure something will be done and said today that will enlighten you and that you will walk away from this service saying, I'm happy that I was in the house of the Lord this morning. Those watching online, I hope that same for you, that something will be said this morning that you would either change your mind about where you are in life and, and come, come to God wherever you are, uh, and something that will be said that will enlighten you. Yes. But we're happy to be here with us this morning. Yes. Welcome back to the crime stand. I think we have Sister Sheldon and Sister Cindy uh, at the Hagerstown Convention. We want to welcome you back to yes. the yes. Sunday morning service and anybody else that was away, we welcome you back this morning. Anybody visiting for the very first time, welcome, and visitors alike, welcome, and those that are, have always attended and always here, we thank you for being here. I say it all the time, we can't have church without you, without us, yeah. and then the Lord meets with us. Thank God for that, praise the Lord. I want us to stand, please, as I, uh, we start the service, I want to ask Brother Horace to come to the podium to ask God's blessing on this service, we have Brother James this morning to bring the word. Also, I'll kind of take uh, my spoken request at this time, please, on my left. Yes, my sister uh, Emily, please, uh, please, in prayer. She's uh, quite ill and getting up in age, but uh, the Lord is still able. Sorry, what was it? Sister Beth, okay. Church. Please so, remember, sorry, please remember Javon and his team as they travel to Minnesota today and all the young people. Yes, please. Uh, little Javon, uh, Sister Romelia, and I and uh, Sister um, Darlene have been working with a young man, so we ask you to remember them and the whole entire team and pray that the Lord will be with them. He said to me last Sunday that he said, Brother Ray, the Lord is born with me, so I said, I told him yes, I reassured him that. We also want to remember Sister John, husband. Mr. Chair, hold us in a prayer as he goes through some treatment. We ask you that you remember him in a prayer, please, that the Lord will touch him and make him well. Continue, remember Sister Toledo, please. Um, we're not sure what the Lord had planned for her, but I, 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 I we praise the Lord that she has brought her from where she was to where she is today. And thank God for answered prayers. It tells us that God still answers prayer. Um, even though the doctors can pretty well tell you what they, what they see and find, God has the final say. Thank God. Amen. So my, on my right? Yeah, I remember Brother Window, please. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Where am I so sister? Sorry, I remember your prayer. It is summertime, there's a lot of people traveling, so take your time to take a break. It helps, I promise you. I try to take one minute where I can. Those on the platform. Yes. Okay. Just a moment. Brother Horace, would you come, please? I want you to remain standing after the opening prayer. Sister Karen will start our opening conversation, our congregational song. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our kind, gracious, eternal Father and our God. Again, dear Lord, we humble ourselves at your footstool of mercy another morning. We thank you, dear Father, for this another Lord's Day morning. You give us, dear Father, to come to assemble ourselves in your holy house, dear Father, to give you thanks and to praise your holy and righteous name. We thank you, Lord God, for all your goodness and your mercy yeah. through the week that is past, dear Father. When we were not thinking of you, dear Father, you were thinking of us. You keep us safe from all harm and danger, Lord. Lord, and you preserve us even from the heat of the day. And you keep us, Lord God, willing, dear Father, in mind, soul, and body to come to your house another time, dear Father, to give you thanks and to adore and lift you up. 
as King of kings and Lord of lords. Because, Lord, we know in ourselves we are nothing, dear Father. We cannot do nothing without you, Lord God, but we are glad to know, King of glory, we can do all things through you. Because you are our strength. You are our help in time of weariness, dear Father, and your delight when shadows fall. So, Father, we pray that we must take this worship service in charge another time, Lord. We pray that we must bless each and every one, dear Father, gathering through that door, Lord. We pray that we must remember their heart condition. Give them a mind, dear Father, as they sit under the sound of your word another time, Lord God. They may have their hearts open. Dear mine, Lord God, may center on thee, Lord, that whatever is come from the mouth of our trusting pastor, Lord God, it may reach them this morning, and even one soul, Lord God, may cry out, Lord God, what must I do to be saved? Father, we remember where we as he cheered his service, dear Father. Remember every song that should sing, Lord God. Everything that should be said and done, Lord, and our pastor, Lord God, strengthen him and anoint him afresh. And help us he speak, Lord. He may speak as an oracle of God. Use him, Lord God, as a vessel in your hand, God. Give him the strength that he needed this very moment, dear Father. And help, Lord God, that he may continue, Lord God, to be as light upon a hill. Lord God, to send forth the beacons far and near, Lord, that many may see your good works and come to acknowledge you as Lord of their life. Father, we heard many requests that have brought forth, dear Father. The sick and the afflicted ones, dear Father. Remember those in the hospital, so later. Sister Hamlet's name was mentioned, Brother Norman, Lord God. And all, oh, Lord God, it would fail me, dear Father, to name each and every one. But we are glad to know, Lord, you heard them, Lord God. And we pray, dear Father, you're standing by, dear Father. And we are glad to know you are in control, dear Father, of each and every one of us lives. So take over now, Lord God. Bless this service, dear Father. Guide it, Lord. Fill our hearts. Strengthen us, Lord. And keep us ready for your kingdom, Lord. For we know not the minutes or the hour when the Son of Man cometh. So help us to be ready, dear Father. Bless his service now as we humble ourselves at your footstool of mercies. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. Number 184, stand up, stand up for Jesus. 184 out of our church hymnal. Stand up.
Sister Rhonda will do our responsive reading at this time, found in the back of our hymnal, and it's responsive reading number 20. Sister Rhonda. I'll ask the congregation to join me on the light print and the, sorry, the platform to join me on the light print and the congregation to respond in the dark print. Let's begin. God's church. Thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all the nations that are upon the earth. The Lord shall count when he writeth up the people that this man was born in her. Jesus said unto them, For whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. I forgot to mention my fellow pastor and friend, Brother Dwayne. <laughs> Welcome back. Brother Dwayne and his family was gone for two weeks. We welcome him back. But I go to go one step further and say he'll preach his preaching tonight, and I'm sure Brother Dwayne will be very happy if every single one of us that is here now will come back tonight. Amen. Our service starts at, at 7 with our chorusing at 645. Please come back to be with us tonight. Those who are watching online, we ask you to join us in that service. This coming Wednesday night is our regular prayer and prayer service. Join us in that too. Please, because again, we have those, Brother Jim, plan those uh, sometimes quite differently. So please join us in that service on Wednesday night and back again on next Saturday afternoon at 5.30. Sister Virginia did a wonderful job yesterday in a prayer meeting. Uh, spoke of humility and, and, and giving God and, and how we are to be and stay, we are to be and, st and to stay humble. So thank God for uh, our prayer meetings. Next Saturday afternoon at 5.30 is our scheduled prayer meeting and then next Sunday back to our scheduled um, services. If there's any difference in times or services, Pastor will announce that when he gets up. Sister Karen will lead us in another, in another congregational song as we sit, number 445. There's a call comes ringing or the souls to rescue there are souls to save send the light send the light send the light the blessed gospel light let it shine from shore to shore Oh, 
Sister Cindy will pray us at this time with a solo. for that beautiful song let me touch Jesus let me tell you many days many days you request that Lord let me touch you take me through today Lord guide us 
Praise the Lord. So happy to have Jesus with, her, with us on our side. That we could go to, we could turn to any time we need. What a friend. What a friend. That stick it closer than her brother. Well, church, it's time for Brother James to bring to us the message he, the Lord has led in his heart. Amen. And I'm going to praise him up again. He always brings us good, encouraging messages for the last few years. And the Lord has really been with Brother James and the congregation. So we thank God for Brother James. Keep him, up, keep him in your prayers, please, that the Lord will continue, continue to keep his hands upon him and keep him healthy. Brother James. I'm very thankful to be served this morning. I see everyone that's here. I trust everybody is trying their best to make it. And if you see any room for improvement, work on it. We all can do better. Every single one of us can do better, especially when you're able. So I will be speaking to you this morning on God's people in today's world. I'm going to be reading two passages of scripture taken from first, uh, Second Corinthians and from Colossians. Second Corinthians, um, five and fourteen. And fifteen. Second Corinthians five, fourteen and fifteen. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. And from Colossians chapter 3, Verses 12 through 14. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14. Put on, therefore, as the elect. Look at the word elect. See what God calls his people? Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Amen. And above all things, put on charity, yes. which is the bond of perfectness. Now, the subject I announce to you is a big, big subject. And I trust I will be across in a few minutes I'm here what the Lord has laid on my heart as Brother Ray just finished saying. I said to the Sunday school class there a while ago when we were closing out the class that basically there is a, there is a, um, a theory or a belief in the world today, generally speaking, that nobody can live without sin. That's not what the Bible teaches. That's not what the Bible teaches. No, that's not what the Bible teaches. And there's a sin, sinful, secular, evil world out there. That's not for the church. The church is different. Amen. I have a few um, quotes here I would like to mention before I go any further. And this one will chart the course for the thought that is behind this subject. All the water in the world, however hard it tried, could never, never sink a ship unless it got inside. All the evil in the world, the wickedness and sin, can never sink your soul's fair craft unless you let it in. Yes. 
That was written by A.C. Hoffman. And um, another one is written by Charles H. Spurgeon. I would not give much for your religion unless it can be seen. Lamps do not talk, but they do shine. And another one written by Seth Wilson. It doesn't take such a great man to be a Christian. It just takes all there is of him. First of all, God created and owns everything. The 24th Psalm tells us in the very first verse, the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. Don't get frightened please. I'm not going to tell you anything wrong. Open your hearts. I'm not going to tell you a thing wrong. By the help of the Lord. So God has a blood bought family. Called the church. You cannot get around it. And I'm standing on the Bible and everything I say here. I'm standing on the Bible and what I say here. I have looked and watched and seen the progression of the world, materially speaking and otherwise, since my lifespan. And I, I can remember from 1949, when I was five years old. I've seen it. I see it now. And I'm telling you the truth. It's different. It's a lot different. It is, it is a lot different. And everywhere I go, I hear the same thing. And I've, I've been told, even by church people, other, other church people, that all churches are suffering the same thing. They're, 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 they're struggling to make it in this world because of the serious environment and secular environment and sinful environment that the world is in. You understand? The point here is fish live in the sea but they're not salty. Hmm? They're not salty. So it is with his church elected to serve a purpose right. elected to serve a purpose higher up huh? come on church. higher up higher up that's what God does for people he takes them out of this old sinful world and elevates them to live according to their knowledge and understanding. Amen. And if you love the Lord, you'll try to learn all you can. Amen. And you'll grasp all you can. Amen. You'll read all you can. Amen. You'll pray all you can. Amen. You'll live good. Amen. That's what God Amen. does for people. Amen. And if you look into the book of Philippians, in chapter 2, you see a scripture there written by Paul. Uh, chapter 2 of Philippians and verse 15 that ye, that, that ye may be blameless and harmless the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that I may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain. Amen. Neither labored in vain. Yes, Paul did everything he could do to see that these people made it. Yes. And that was his concern. Yes. That was his chief concern. That was his mission. Yes. He wanted to know that he had done that he all, all that he could do yes. by the help of the Lord. Now, don't misunderstand me. It is only by the grace of Almighty God that you can get out of this old sinful world 
and say goodbye. Amen. Lord, take this old lump of clay. If you can use it, use it. If I can't do no more, sing a song at home to myself. If I can't do no more, get on my knees once in a while and pray. If I can't do no more, come to church. Hmm? This is about God and His church. I also told us on a school class there a few minutes ago that the, the, the work of the church is not talk. It is doing. Anybody can talk anything. And the Apostle Paul tells us in his word again in Ephesians, after doing all the stun, stun, are we doing enough to stand? Hmm? There are antichrist that are prevalent in the world today. You know, God, wait till I come this here. Look in, the, in one of the epistles of John. I don't remember which one it is. You'll see it there. Already they're here in the world. John said, antichrist. That means against. Against Christ. Against, against that which is right. Against righteousness. Amen. You see, the Christian life is a war. Yes. It's a constant battle right against wrong. Yes. And wrong against right. Yes. One of them going to win out. Yes. That's what the Bible tells us. That they that are after the flesh. Do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit. The things of the spirit. It takes personal endeavor. It takes personal meaning to life yes. to fight through this. Yes. yes. Sir. Now Jesus said, and Jesus was true. What Jesus said was true. Okay. Jesus said, in this world, you shall have tribulation. In the world we're living in. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. That means that with him, you can laugh at the storm and ride it out. Yes. Come on, church. Amen. You got to ride it out. Yes. yes. You got to ride it out. Right now, the world is going through a storm. The whole world. A storm. And some of them are rough. Hmm. Yes. That's a beautiful scripture. In this world, he never, he never, he never cut the corners. He made, it, he made us know. In this world here, you shall have tribulation. Those things that will test our faith. Eh? Our patience. Our endurance. That's what tribulation is. And if you never had none, you might get some. Before you leave this world. Lucky you. Bless you if you never had any. So. In other words... God's people are overcomers. Amen. There is no other word Amen. that we can use. Amen. You have to be overcomers. Amen. Huh? Amen. Or it will overcome you. Amen. And the prophet Isaiah said, But they that wait upon the Lord, upon the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles they shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not fade away what an encouraging hopeful verse of scripture for the church you know Jesus Christ is building a church Brother James not building a church. Christ is building a church. That's what he said he had come to do. I will build my church. And he said the gates of hell wouldn't prevail against it. Yes. So, Jesus also said that he was in the world. Mm. I'm reading the Bible now. This is John, John 1 and 10. He was in the world. Jesus didn't say this. It's talking about Jesus. Jesus, he, he was in the world, and the world was with John said it. 
He was in the world and the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Huh? You see how this doubt tales? You see how, how true this story is? How wonderful this story is? How, how, how interesting this story is? That we can gain audience from this great God and try to live right in this world? Grace. Marvelous grace. Grace that is greater than our sins. You better know you got some of it. Yes, you better know you got some of it. Yes. Today's world is changing, my beloved friends. It's changing and people say that the church should change with it. But I don't read that. I do not read that in the Bible. That the church should change with the world. If the world and the church are going to be the same thing. How are you going to win anybody? Mm. So, if you look, if you look into the book of, of, uh, of Romans, you will see another scripture there. Mostly written by Paul too. Romans chapter 8. You will see there where Paul said, Nay in all these things. I'm not going to read the rest of them up, up, up on top. Nay in all these things. <laughs> We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Yes. You hear people talking about it all the time. You meet people on the road. How are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm fighting through it. That's, he's talking about life. Life a general. He said, I'm trying to ride right over it. Yes. Life in general is a fight. We are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded. I am fully convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. You notice Paul said, nor things present. There were things present when that Paul lived under. If he were to come back today and see the thing that we got present in the world today. But this is what he said. The Bible tells us the word of God shall stand forever. Yes. Huh? Yes. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of God shall stand forever. Yes. yes. So, the way to do this is by faith. Hmm? It is by faith. I'm reading the Bible. John, 1 John 5 and 1 set, 4 says, For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. That's what the Bible says. So why have I said all that? The Bible clearly teaches that there's a difference between the world and the church. Amen. Complete difference between the world and the church. And if you look into second, the, the first epistle of John again in chapter 2, you will see that I'm going to read verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world. Yes. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, the lust of the flesh. Amen. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. Yes, is not of the Father. The but is of the world. Yes, sir. And the world passes away. And the lust thereof. But he that doeth. You heard what I said? Yes. He that doeth the will of God. Abideth forever. Amen. And the Bible gives us a clear example of that. Yes. If you look into 2 Timothy 4 and 10. Yes. You will see a scripture there which says. Paul said in, in pain and in sorrow. My brother Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world. 
So what the text is saying in Corinthians is, as God so loved the world, Amen. so as God so loved the world to give his son for it, and as Christ so loved the world as to pass, as to, as to pour his life for it, so we are influenced by the very same love. Desire to live for the glory of God. Amen. You heard what I read just now, a few minutes ago. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Amen. Yes, for the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judged that if one died for all, then we're all dead. In other words, that means they're the sinners. That's who Jesus died for. Yes. Hmm? That's what Jesus died for. I heard a man preaching on the radio yesterday, uh, talking about um, the, the people Mormon complaining about Jesus, Jesus entertaining sinners in his house. And he asked them, the audience, he said, you know, glad? Where would you be? Where would you be? You see the foolishness of hypocrisy and self-righteousness. He came not to call the righteous. But sinners. Amen. Yeah. So then, the motivating uh, uh, love is the motivating power or factor in Christianity. Yeah. I come to this text I read here. Love. 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 People got themselves in a capsule these days. Some people. And the only, no, the only person they know themselves. True. They don't love nobody. True. Much like God. Yeah. And I'm surprised to hear some, some about so many came. I don't know say they don't believe in God. Yeah. I tell you, it is scary. Yeah. It is scary to know that some of these young people come up and say they don't believe in God. Yeah. Who's going to boost up came on again? Spiritually, I don't know who's going to be. I don't know who's going to be. But it's needed bad. Okay, man needs an old time revival. Amen. Amen. Like those people had years ago. Yes. 16 weeks. Yes. Revival. Yes. You have five nights now and I grumble. I, I come tonight. It's too long. Five nights. Five nights. Yes. Billy Graham preached for 16 weeks one time. In the United States. Huh? Let me tell you something. So it was love for God and freedom that caused our forefathers to suffer the way that they did. Hmm? They put themselves aside. Look at what they had. Look at the hardship they went through. Uh, covered wagons. I don't know if they had rubber wheels or not. Up through the, 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 the bushes. For miles and miles and miles they traveled with so, lim so much limited things to, 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 to work with. Yeah. Materially speaking, I mean. But they did it. Yes. The love of God in them yes. to preserve this gospel that we hear here tonight, today. All, we, we, we're fortunate that we all we got to try to keep it going now. They preserved it. Love caused God to look for Adam Amen. Yes. Right. That is so in the garden. Yes. You see people writing off people. It's wrong. Yes. God don't write off nobody. Yes. Somebody make a mistake, they want to tar them yes. and brand them. Yes. yes, they want them to come back in the church door. Yes. That's not right. No. There's the kind you need to look for. That's the kind. Yes. You remember that story? There were 99 that safely lay. Yes. But where were the one? The one sheep. Yes. yes, the one sheep, my beloved friends. The one sheep. There were 99 that safely lay. In the shelter of the fall. And I can't remember all that now. Beautiful song. It's a redemption song book. Beautiful song. Jesus went looking for the one that was lost 
Come on, friend. You mustn't show your brother or sister when they backslide. You show them interest. Don't cut them off. You might win them right back. Love covers a multitude of sins. Yeah. Love preserved mankind through Noah. Are we with me today? Love. Noah obeyed God. <clears throat> and did what God told him to do. It looked impossible. It looked impossible. But he did it. And he preached and never got discouraged either. Mocked him and laughed at him. And the Bible says, so, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. Why are you worrying about people laughing at you for? Not everybody will love the Christian, you know. Tell them laugh on and get on with your life. You got a life to live, not them. You got your life to live. They're not living your life for you. And then the text in Colossians tells us, notice what it says, put on. I say put on. Practice. As God elected people. That's what the church is. Mercies. Oh. When I think about the mercilessness that I hear going on in this world today, see. I don't see much of it, I hear it. The mercilessness. Put on humbleness of mind. Christian, you must be humble. Don't be high minded. Be humble. God can't use proud people. Put on meekness. Meekness. You know what that means? Not always on the forefront. You see, you remember Moses? Moses didn't jump too quick. Huh? He didn't jump too quick. It took three different things to convince him. That he, what he was doing came from God. And when he saw that bush burning. And he wasn't being consumed or brought up. Trust me. I went to Savannah some time ago. Some years ago a hurricane had passed through there. And I didn't know the, 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 it would go that far down. And the, bush were, the bush were brown. The grass was dead. But I said, what happened to the grass? Salt water. That wasn't fire. Salt water. He, his was fire. The bush burning wasn't burned. The ground where you stand is holy ground. Take off your shoes. Long suffering. Hmm. Oh, it's so much to this. It's so easy to slip through this world without, without no, no, nothing. As I mentioned here last time, I'm going to cook that bob in the water. That's not a way to serve the Lord. Huh? For, for beer runs. Oh, everybody not alike. That is what I've been preaching here from time I've been here. Everybody is not alike. What would hurt some people? Other people laugh at. What would offend some people? Other people would laugh and get on with their life. It wouldn't bother them. Forgiving one another. Hmm? So we don't need to go any further. Than the, than the the thirteenth chapter of First Corinthians, it got it there too. Yes. The, 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 the readers are readings. Sometime, but I don't know how to read them. That died off. They don't need that no more. Yeah. Marriage is a sacred institution. Love suffereth long and is kind. Love envieth not. Love wanteth not itself. Is not puffed up. 
Why you back up about? Some people back to the church, back to their husband, back to their wife, back to their children, back to the workplace. Kind of a miserable life. Does not behave itself unseemly. Does not behave itself unseemly. Love, um, seek it not our own. Is not easily provoked. Think it no evil. You know something, friends? This life of a Christian is not about us. It's about God. And if anybody here is thinking they can get through this Christian life without some self-denial self and some sacrifice, they're not going to work. I told us on school class there a few minutes ago. I left this office here a few days ago, some last week I believe it was, on my way to a personal mission for Brother James. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I got a car along the road. And I, I ran the car off the road and stopped. And the, the message was come to the hospital quick, please. I turned that car on the road and went. It's not about Brother James. It's about the work of God. Yes, sir. Yes. That's it. Rejoice is not an iniquity. You're just about it, no? First Corinthians 13. Rejoice is not an iniquity, but rejoice is in the truth. Oh, how fun it is that people don't, people don't want to see the evil in people. Only oh, the evil. They see the one thing out of a hundred. They got 99 good things, but they don't see the one them. Beareth all things. Listen to what I'm saying. Beareth all things. There are situations in life you can get in that you didn't know you were getting. That these scriptures come to reality to you. Huh? Yeah. Sometimes these, these, these realities come to us. And I'll tell you what it means. Beareth all things. Hopes all things. Endureth all things. Love never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Yeah, but... And now abideth faith, hope, and charity. These three. But the greatest of these is love. You know why Jesus wept with Mary and Martha? He loved them. He loved Lazarus. And Lazarus had passed on. Yes. And he wept with them. Yes. We see his love in the hot midday sun. Yes. Yes. Talking to a woman yes. that most people probably shun. Yes. You heard what I said? Yes, sir. We see his love in Gethsemane yes. for yes, us. He swell as it were, great drops of blood. The Bible speaks about Christ in you, the hope of glory. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Huh? Love for Christ and love for one another creates togetherness. That's why people marriages seven or eight years love. Yes. Kept it together. Yes. Nothing else will do it. And I spoke to somebody yesterday. Brought up something. I said, I don't like to talk about it. Please. I don't like to talk about it because there's some things I don't believe in that happened in the past. And not that kind of thing. Great peace have they with love thy law. And nothing shall offend him. 
the main object in a church of God person should be peace and togetherness and not chop chopping one another. Thank God for salvation. Thank God for saving our souls. Come on, church. We're going to sing a little song here. Now, it might be an invitational song, but it, I've been impressed to sing it this morning. I would do that at first, but I can't let it go. I'm going to sing it. Sing it, Fifi. I'm free. So long I search for life's meaning, enslaved by the world and my greed. Then the door of my prison was opened. For the ransom was prayed, I am free. Let us stand. Sing it out. So long I had searched for life's meaning in the strength by the world and its green. Then the door of my prison was open by love for the ransom was paid was free I'm free from the guilt the fear of tomorrow <coughs> the fear <coughs> tomorrow I'm free from the guilt of the past For I've traded my shackles For I'm free from the guilt that I carried. Come on, church. From the guilt that I carried. From the dull, empty life set free. For men, I met Jesus. He made me complete. He forgave. I'm free from the fear of tomorrow. That I carried from the dull, empty life and set free. For when I met Jesus, He made me complete, He forgave. I'm free from the guilt of tomorrow. I'm free from the guilt of
shackled by a heavy burden Neath a load of guilt and sin Then the hand of Jesus touched me The hand of Jesus touched me and now I am no longer the same. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And oh, the joy. Something happened and now I know He touched me and made me whole Since I met this blessed Savior Things he cleansed and made me whole. I will never cease to praise him. I'll shout it while he turned the He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that filled my soul, something happened, and now, Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me old. Thy great salvation so full and free Lord for saving my soul thank you Lord for Thank you, Lord. To me, I would love to have this audience back on Wednesday night, please. Let us worship the Lord. Yes. Wednesday night still going. Yes. Praise the Lord. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit works. When we're receptive and we're obedient to God's word. We thank you for being here this morning. Thanks, Brother James, for that time and a beautiful, encouraging message. Yes. I said when I first got up to introduce him that the Lord has been using Brother James in a very unusual way. Yes. 
Thank God for Brother James. Thank God for the church. Thank God for you. Thank God for each one of us. Come back to be with us tonight. Brother Dwayne's been off for two weeks, so I'm sure he too has a fresh word in his mouth to bring to us what the Lord has led in his heart. So come back to be with us tonight. The Lord has really been meeting with us. We want to be quick to praise God for that. Thank God. Nothing that we've done, but it tells us that what we're doing is right in the, face, in the sight of God. So thank God for that. Come back to be with us tonight, please. As we say thanks for everything that, that is happening in our congregation. And we, those that came up for prayer this morning, we hope that the Lord has met with you and meet with you. And again, you can have a testimony on your lips that you're prayed for and prayed with. Amen. And you answered prayer. Praise the Lord. God always, always answer prayers. Yes. Sister Virginia Bodman, you come and dismiss the service for me, please. Let us pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, Amen. we're so thankful, Lord, for your precious Holy Spirit. Yes. We thank you for the service, Lord. It blessed our souls. It uplift us, Lord. Lord, we thank you for Brother James. Continue to strengthen and bless him, Lord. Lord, help us to always love one another and pray for one another. You love us so much, Lord, Amen. and you died for everyone. So you want us to love others. Help us to love others and show it. Amen. Lord, we thank you for all you do for us. For saving, keeping grace, love, mercy. Lord, help us to love you more and serve you better that one day, Lord, we might hear well done. Bless us all together, Lord. Amen. And take us home in safety. In Jesus' precious holy name, we ask these mercies. Amen. Amen.